Hey guys, Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com here. We are backstage with Troy Van Leeuwen from Queens of the Stone Age. And uh, they're doing sound check with another band out there right now. So we're going to talk about Troy's rig here in the green room. Um, Troy, yes. thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. PG. PG, like there. PG. Is that good, right? <laughs> Now, you and Josh were off on a motorcycle ride just now. We want to talk about that a little bit first, oh, okay. or should we just dive into the rig? We can talk about that, because that's fresh on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we've, we've got this trailer that we take with our, you know, with, with our bus on the road in the States, and we put our bikes in there. So any town, especially like, well, we're here in Council, Council Bluffs, Iowa. I guess that's where we are. Um, there's always some good riding, you know, there's always some open roads and, and some breeze at your knees. So that was just a fun, you know, like hour and a half excursion that we took. And, you know, when you're on the road, there's a lot of things that you neglect because you're changing venues all the time. You're going to different hotels. So we need something like that to keep our brains, you know, active and also keep us away from, <laughs> drinking too much and <laughs> and watching too much of the wire and and game of thrones you know <laughs> so, so blow off a little steam and get your mind yeah, clear before yeah, the yeah so that's that's a good thing for us what kind of rigs are we talking about in terms of bikes um they're mostly harleys um you know i know there's some people have stigmas about harleys i don't think i i don't think I'm of myself as a harley guy but i like my harley mm. you know um so what kind I have a, a 2007 Springer Heritage Softail, and it's you know it's got some custom things on it. It's kind of to my liking. Um, does it match? Does the paint match any of your guitars or anything? Just kidding. No, no. I mean, I mean black. Yeah, ox blood. I, got some, I don't have any ox blood um, on my bike, but I certainly have black. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't really like black <laughs> at all. All right. So in terms of your guitar rig, you've actually got like three sort of rigs one for regular six string stuff one for lap steel and one for keyboard stuff do you want to start off talking about your guitar rig yeah well basically my guitar rig is is years of accumulation <laughs> of stuff um some of it's old some of it's new um some of it's analog some of it's digital i, I don't really you know care too much for you know everything being vintage and all special and, and you know precious I, I like stuff that works um you know so i like a mix you know there's there's um there's some you know some new pedals that i have and um there's um some new companies that i've discovered yeah. that are making pedals i really like this company called earthquaker devices yeah. they're in uh, um i guess they're in akron ohio, ohio. Um, using a couple of their their pedals, uh, I use the Dispatch Master. Okay, that's a nice reverb echo. Um, and I also use the Bit Commander. And these are on your regular guitar rig. Yes. Now those must be in the rack, I'm guessing, yeah. because on the pedal board on stage we didn't see that. Yeah, because there's I also use a ground control unit because I'm also running MIDI to change this the newest piece of gear I have, which is called a Fractal. So the um, XFX2 or yeah yeah um and I've been holding off forever to use something like that but it's just kind of crept into my life because I've always used a like a TC Electronics um GeForce yeah. and um it it started making noise after using it for 10 years <laughs> so I just figured I'd, I'd get something new and actually I've gotten quite and quite used to the uh, the fractal it sounds it sounds great actually because once you get into the all the parameters of all the effects you can actually make it sound pretty pretty good pretty much custom now your on stage amp rig is basically a couple of ac30s right i had driving and i think it was like a 212 cab and a marshall 412 and then another ac30 combo mm -hmm. they're both hand wired uh ac30s um like the recent hand wired versions that you can buy, you just refinished them in red. Yeah, yeah they're just they're just Tolux in, in Bronco red because all of our amps are Tolux in Bronco red right now. <laughs> um, so there's there's those I use those because they're new and I think I've had one go down on me 
um, in the last six years. Mm -hmm. So how do those work with the Axe effects? Like, can you sort of break down what you use those for and what you use the Axe effects for and how many sounds you use in the Axe effects and stuff? I'm really using the Axe effects for reverbs and tap delays. Um, and then I'll, I actually use it also for um, sort of like a, a, I guess it would be univibe, you know, okay. sort of wobbly mm -hmm. effect. But I also use it for routing stuff to different amps. Okay. Like, I, my main amp with the, the 212 and the 412 is pretty dry. The and then the other... The AC30 yeah, head. AC30 head. And then the other combo has all the effects going to it. Okay. So sometimes I'll do a little bit of stereo stuff, and sometimes I'll just throw everything on that side. Just so all of, yeah, control out front, front of house, you know. Um, so all the amp sounds are from the AC30s. You're mainly using effects from the XFX. Yeah, I'm not really down with um, using, you know, digital amps yet. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say never, you know, but it just, just doesn't feel right to me. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm using, for gain stages, I'm using pedals. You know, I use some way huge stuff. I've got a pork loin for like just a straight boost. Mm -hmm. And I'm using uh, this company called Fuzz Rocious that makes this great fuzz pedal called the OC Demon. Mm -hmm. That's hand wired too. And, and um, uh, is that one in your rack? That's in the rack too, yeah. Um, but yeah, what I have on the pedal board is kind of before all, all the rack, you know. So I'm using also this uh, Super Puss mm -hmm. uh, delay. Yeah. Just for, you know, if I want to get nutty for a second, it gets really extreme. Analog, so. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the custom audio electronics tap tempo pedal that's on that main pedal board, is that for the Axe FX? That's for the Axe FX, yeah. It's just for the tap tempos of everything, yeah. So. How many different sounds are you using? Or different, uh, like the ground control from Voodoo Lab has a lot of buttons on it. Do you use that many I patches? Do, I or? use all of them. And I have, like, banks and banks of song presets you know like we started off with a set like a general kind of set so i made you know a bank for each song so i'm using it all yeah and i'm actually accessing the loops as well the first eight loops which are the pedals are the sounds radically different from like what you're doing for the new album like clockwork yeah. versus the older stuff that's kind of where the 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 evolution of you know sort of my role in the band has has gone yeah so when i first joined the queens you know josh and i were kind of using the same sort of setup which i'm not going to talk about because <laughs> that's that's his thing and over the years my role has sort of become like you know the single coil playing ambient color guy so that's why I don't just play guitar. I play lap steel and yeah. I play keyboards too. Yeah, that's why I went to the AC 30s after using his stuff because it just branched out where his sound is the main sort of queen sound, you know, mm -hmm. and mine kind of flanks his his realm. And then now that we have Dean in the band too, there's there's a lot of ground being covered. So you can't just live in that one general mid-range guitar yeah. world we we go from high to low. more complimentary yeah yeah so but the ac30s can with a certain pedal they can do what the old the old stuff does they're very versatile you know i use this q zone from dunlop it's basically a, a wah pedal that you just set and forget and it makes perfect chicken every time there's a Morley wah too. Yeah, it's just a straight up wah. Yeah, I don't think there's a fuzz in there. The Dunlop volume pedal, right? Do you do a lot of swelling effects or? Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty key uh, piece of gear in my rig. There's lots of times where it's just easier for me for me to hit it with my foot rather than my finger. As far as like you know, easing back. Um, there's some points in the set where we, you know pull the volume almost all the way down you know and keep playing and uh even our sound men out front will pull the faders down at some point you know just for for drama yeah. what's the lap steel it's it's this chandler lap steel it's just a giant hunk of mahogany and it's got this 
I think it's like an Invader pickup. <laughs> it's just the hottest. Like a Duncan? Yeah, like the hottest pickup you can find. Um, it's an unusual combo for a lap still. Yeah, it's not really like, you know, it's not really used in the traditional yeah. sense very much. It's it's a, it's a noisemaker, yeah. and it's a, a searing sort of swooping, you know, effect piece you know a lot of the times there's a you know there's this there's a, ring, a reverb on it and there's a delay on it and uh i'll use an ebo on it even yeah. so what else is on that pedal board i um, think there was a line 6 dl4 delay model yeah. right yeah it's just easier to have that guy there because there's three different settings that i use for the delays um and it's i, I just use a um i think it's the rev5 boss reverb mm-hmm. Um, and then there's my, one of my new favorite pedals, uh, that my friend Jonathan Hish turned me on to. Okay. Uh, it's called the Super Ego. It's an elect, uh, electro harmonics pedal. And it's basically like a sort of a freeze portamento kind of thing that really, really helps make more noise. <laughs> um. And uh, there's a there's a green rhino by way huge just to boost it if I need to. On the DL4, are you doing any sort of looping type stuff, or mainly just straight delays? Yeah, it's pretty much straight delays. I I think a, there's a there's an expression pedal just to you know tweak the feedback um, if I need to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that rig. I just use a regular slide because steel or it's Pyrex. Steel. Yeah, it's steel. Um, Sometimes, because there's there's one song on the new record called Collapsia where I have to switch between lap steel and guitar slide guitar really quick, so I need I need to have it on my finger already. I used to use the big solid bars, mm-hmm. but yeah, that just it just won't work. So it works fine now. Now, what else is in your rack? I think you mentioned the Fuzzerocious and the uh, yeah. is that where the the Q, the Q what? zone is in there. I think there's a green rhino in there too. My rig is constantly changing. I mean, right now it's it's working really really nice, but I know in like two months it's gonna there's gonna be some changes. It's just the way it is. I find new stuff and I find stuff that's that works better. And well, speaking of that, that's probably a good segue into your new, I think your newest guitar, yeah, the Echo Park. There's there's the Echo Park. It's um, it's based off a design um, that Leo Fender, the, the main builder for Echo Park, Gabriel, used to work at GNL, I guess. Mm-hmm. So he discovered this guitar that Leo Fender left behind uh, in an attic, I guess. It's like a, you know, it's the shape of a telly, but it's kind of bigger. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's handmade by Gabriel. It's it's really cool. And it's got like a traditional T style bridge with I think brass barrels or brass, something. Brass barrels on it, you know. Um I've been I've been using some of the mastery stuff too because I have a, I have another telly that has the mastery bridge on it. So I'm kind of toying with that. Um does that other telly have like a Bigsby on it to work with that or No, no, they make a telly bridge now, uh, mastery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is really great. It's totally, it like, just stays, it keeps everything just, you know. That's another thing where it's like new technology. It's like sometimes people go, eh, you know, the purists. And I'm like, fuck all that. I, I like things that work and things that stay in tune. Yeah. And I'm on the road. I'll leave all my vintage stuff at the studio, you know, where it's in a nice environment where it's not going to get thrashed. Um, well, it could get thrashed. <laughs> <laughs> but... um yeah, so I've been using the mastery bridge on that and on you know all my jazz masters too. What are the pickups in the Echo Park before we go on to your new um, jazz master? I think it's modeled after a '60s Tele pickup. I'm not sure what year he said. You know, he's so great. He basically built that guitar and treated it in like two weeks, like in the most intense part of our pre-production to get ready to go on the road. So he would just show up at the at the show with and at the the day of the show it was ready and I couldn't even remember all the stuff that he did to it but it's it's such a great guitar and it feels good and sounds good um in the neck pickup I think there's um it's a gold foil sort of 
Diarmond almost yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, but it's Arcanes are in some other guitars on this stage, but yeah, yeah. it's just it's those pickups. Yeah, they're go- they're he calls them the gold foil pickups, yeah. but it's a single coil and it's it it sounds kind of like a mid '60s Japanese like Tysco Del Rey. You know, I, I like that sound. So, did you have any special requests in terms of the neck or neck profile or the frets or anything? I just really was going for like a a mid 60s kind of telly you know just something that's that's a little little bigger you know but just classic um um no no real frills there other than the pickups and the way it's built i mean it's built like a like a tank you know all right so next uh i think what we saw earlier was is it a new signature jazz yeah. master it's, wow here it is right here <laughs> um this is the prototype of my new jazz master it's basically it's modeled after mid 60s like 66 65 jazz master but the only difference and of course it's all sweaty um is instead of the plastic pickup selector here i I put a a full-on uh toggle switch because i learned how to play electric guitar on basically a les paul and so I use this circuit all the time, just for either for pickup switching or to, to for for killing for it's killing. Faster than the little slider. Yeah, it's just I always miss it, you know, live. But I really wanted the aesthetic of a mid '60s jazz master with the matching headstock, um, and the block inlays and the binding on the neck. Um, the pickups are uh, they're they're new vintage American jazz master pickups. Um, although it doesn't come with the mastery bridge, it comes with a Mustang bridge. The production model. model. Yeah, the production model because I wanted to do a deal with the mastery, but it, they, he just couldn't make that many, <laughs> yeah. like more than two hundred. Uh, you know. Um, you know when this will be coming out? I hope before the end of the year, but better be out by now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's the only other thing that's custom, and it's sort of a tip of the hat to a candy apple. It's my candy ox blood sort of you know it's a, it's like a i don't know what they consider like when you know when you get an like an old 50s car or like a 55 bel air or a, or a, you know a 49 merc sometimes they'll paint it this color where it looks black in the dark and then in the light it's like a wine color ox blood so i wanted something like that that really accentuated the curves of the body um, and that's really it. I mean, it's it's pretty much a, a standard standard jazz master, just with my couple of tweaks. Sweet. Now, I think Eric Yurtek mentioned the other main guitar on stage was a Burns 12-string. Yeah, on this new record, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of 12-string on, on the recordings. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the guitar. And right now I'm actually working on a... On a 12 string fender um just because that one's really special to me i've had it forever and i've used the burns yeah the burns and it's green (laughs) it's a green sunburst um so i need a backup you know um what can you tell us about the new fender you're working on well there's actually two um one's a double neck jazz master 12 on top six on the bottom it's a Will that be just be a one-off it's thing? It's a one-off. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I don't. I don't know how many double necks <laughs> Fender could sell, <laughs> or me. Um, but um, yeah, that's something that's going to be very useful for stage because on the record, there's a lot of switching between twelve and six string, and yeah, just to have a backup would be great. And then there, there, there's also talk of maybe doing a Tele twelve string. Just because, like we posted on Facebook before, we, when we were on our way here, telling people, you know, we're going to talk to Troy. What do you want us to ask? And a lot of people were asking about your signature Yamaha that you used to have as a yeah. semi hollow body. I think was it with uh, P90s? Had three P90s in it, yeah. Um, and just wondering if that is just something that is doesn't work within the context of what you have to do for Queens of the Stone Age, or at the moment, it it's better for you know for the new record to have more of a single coil like you know fender sound a little too much gristle on the p90s yeah i mean they're pretty hot and and for 
you know, when I designed that guitar with them, it was during the making of Lullabies to Paralyze, and yeah. we were using a lot of hollow bodies on that record, and a lot of old hollow bodies that we never wanted to bring on the road. So I wanted something that could, you know, do that live, you know, yeah. go from the middle pickup to, you know, to either other of the other pickups. So, and I, I love that guitar. They just stopped making it, and then so they're gone. So find if you can find one, I say, even if it's used, just grab it because, I mean that was a that was a one time deal. <laughs> so you just have a handful left, or I have a couple left. You know, I have one in the box, and I think I have the prototype and a backup of that one. Cool. Another thing people were asking was just about how stuff differs from what you're using on the road versus in the studio. And you've said a lot of things so far that sort of indicate you're trying to replicate what's on the album, but what are some of the differences? Um, Amp wise, another amp that I've used for, I don't know how long is a Fender bass man, a sixties and 65. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll put that into any cabinet and it sounds great. So that's another amp that I used a lot on, on the record. As far as pedals, I'm using just about, everything that i used on the record you know um guitar wise too you know this it's a lot of single coil stuff um tellies um jazz master jaguar yeah i think in your guitar boat on the side of the stage that we i did see a telly and another jazz master and maybe even a les paul and a couple other things or those just like if you're in the mood and you guys decide well, to sue some encore song sometimes or? you know at the at the end of the set we you know do some older stuff and you know that's where the les paul comes out it's a it's a you know the older stuff definitely has a, a humbucker sound um so the yeah the les paul is tuned down for that stuff and actually I, i'm using a jazz master tuned down for some stuff too because like i said you know we're kind of at that spot where we can branch out tone wise even if we're playing an older song it's almost nice to cut through a little more, you know, a different timbre from a different tuning. Yeah, yeah. So I that's and that's another reason why I use those mastery bridges because they really hold that tuning on a jazz master like perfectly. Are quite a few or some of the new songs in like C? I think some of the guitars that Josh is using are in C, like baritone tuning, aren't they? It's not really baritone. It's it's a, it's like a basically if you take a regular tuning guitar um and drop it i don't know was that two whole steps so it's just a regular tuning but yeah. just in c and then on those songs where josh is using that do you also tune down or do you just sort of depends you know there i think there are some songs where you can do both you know somebody can hold down the low end and somebody can do the high end um you know now that we have three guitar players there's a lot of that going on it's kind of there's kind of no no rules now yeah. you know so whatever works you know don't don't trip on it too hard that's how we yeah. kind of roll all right so unless there's anything else in the main rig what I mean, how you can go on you know I could <laughs> <laughs> how about I can talk about my shoes i mean i wear these kind of shoes because i step on a lot of pedals easier to get into the specific foot switch it's a very yeah it's a very surgical procedure that i'm working on those look deadly too. There's they're steel gonna, toes in there, huh? Do some damage. <laughs> Is that blood on one? No, that that could be. <laughs> you too. Ox, ox blood, ox blood on, your, on your shoes. What uh, strings? What gauges do you prefer? And brands, if you have any. Um, I'm I'm not that much of a stickler for strings. I think strings are strings, unless you're in the studio live. I use the Dunlops. Um, you know, I have a good relationship with that company and that. Um, and they've been really good to me and so i just keep on keep on using them they're like 10s or 11s or 11 to 52s for e I, th- I think the c's are 12 to 58 or something like that cool um yeah Talk about picks hercos through dunlop yeah 75 like a 75 millimeter the jimmy okay. page pick that's, that's what i was told sweet what about as far as like tubes in your ac30s are you picky about brand or are they new old stock or just like current no, groove there's, tubes there's kind of a little bit of both um there's some groove tubes in there um i've you know i like i like their stuff um 
it's basically I don't think I've changed the tubes in years. I mean, that's why I like those amps. I, they just don't. Pretty much what came in them? Pretty much what came in them, yeah. I mean, they're stock. I, there's no hot rotting going on on my, on my amps. They just work, you know. Well, that's right. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Yeah. Um, where can people go to find out more about what you're doing and more of what's coming out? with would, queens of the stone age and your new guitars and stuff i would say that you know the newest thing that i'm going to be doing is the, is the fender uh signature model and the double neck so anything you know i'll try and like you know instagram a picture or whatever or maybe you know twitter it but yeah the progress of that is being documented to the double neck mm -hmm. so i'm that's on your uh twitter account no it's going to be done through fender and i'll just kind of you know link it up um, but yeah, I'll, I just keep looking for new stuff. And so, you know, I'll always kind of Instagram or Twitter it. Okay. Yeah. Any Facebook stuff you want to plug or websites you want people to? No, I mean, there's, you know, the other band that I work with, Sweethead, um, we're almost done with our new record and look out for that. Uh, that's going to be coming out hopefully before the end of the year. Cool. Thanks, man. Sure. This is Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com. Thanks for watching.